so complex whatever we have done till now uh, another thing would be i really want to see on the chat like uh, how many have you how many people have already gone through the variable workshop we did earlier if not that gone understand the concept of variables because vari without variables advanced prototyping is actually basic prototyping so yeah hit up on the chat let's see who have already know some understanding of variables okay we we have we have manish on top only one person among 40 okay asad said no abhinav me that's great no okay so we have some we have some people who haven't we have some who have have gone through the variables we'll quickly brush up on the variable side so that we don't miss out on the basic of the advanced prototyping so yeah let's get started okay got it we'll skip the introduction i've already given you mine uh even before variables came in pro advanced prototyping came in a prototyping somewhat used to look like this the complete web like multiple connection connecting with multiple destination even if you want to change a particular color for a button you have to create another screen for it and on click or maybe on hover you have to show that it's going to change it it into different fashion so for that you have to create multiple screen and you have to make multiple connection before right so that how it used to look like when we haven't add variable or advanced prototyping but now it looks like something like this you can define certain things here and there and you can do some kind of uh, sigma stuff and you can make everything clean for yourself and yeah this web jungle will eventually look like this if you start implementing variables and advanced prototyping so like i said before getting into advanced prototyping we'll talk about what variables are variables are like tiles itself is just that variables have one to two simple mapping this tile has one to one mapping let's suppose if we have this pink color uh, defined to this uh, particular box and uh, if you have defined a style for it i'll quickly do this for you guys let's suppose uh, we have this pink color and we have defined it uh, I'll add it. I'll add pink. I'll add even session. Okay, it's uh, actually okay. I'll do this. Yeah. So it says create style. I got a style over here. Again, what I'll do? I'll quickly uh, choose that style. I'll search for this pink. Whenever I change this style, if you see, whenever I change this style, both the colors will change. so this is called one to one mapping whereas with variables what you can do what you can do you can define that this color is going to be applied for this particular use case only for this box you have to define another use case you can use the same color but it will be of different use case and you can actually pick that color and change only it for the use case one or use case two and same goes for the other things as well you can have uh, numbers you can have strings even for the boolean boolean is something that you can make things turn on and turn off in a sense of the visibility like uh, if we see it it shows a toggle button right i'll quickly go up here i'll create another oh i have this session one yeah i'll create another boolean it says boolean okay i'll say true or false so this is the boolean property another we have this number property where we define uh, we give it some name we define some numbers along with it we can even have color property let's suppose we set pink which we described earlier we can give the same color so this is what we are doing we are defining variables over here okay so this is pretty much basic about like what variables look like what uh, particular number uh, particular types of variables are and how you go about it moving on how to apply variables like uh, for the boolean variables you can apply it from here you click on it and you can see i uh, right clicked on it i can see there are two boolean variables that we can actually apply to this particular whole thing so if we say this 
test visible. So this is applied to this whole thing. If I go here and if I try to figure out where that is, oh, I can see it from here itself. So this is in under X or under session also I have one. I'll choose that one. Okay. So this got, yeah. So this got disabled. And as soon as I turned it on, it uh, we started seeing it. I'll quickly detach it. So this is about Boolean variable. How to apply text variable? Let's suppose we have some text written over here. You can see here a diamond box, a diamond icon is coming in and it says apply variable. As soon as I click on it, it gives me a bunch of options. Like it gives me option says uh, back button. I've already defined this particular variable to it. Uh, define a particular variable called back button uh, of text type. And it says back. If I change it to this, the whole text changes to back. Okay, moving on. How to define the number variable? You can even define number variable to a particular text or you can define number variable to its properties. Its properties like, uh, let's suppose we have this uh, rectangle. And if I click on it, I can see this diamond box is again coming up. Uh, Manisha, I'm getting some noise. Uh, can you please mute the participants? Perfect, thank you so much. So yeah, if you see number variable can be defined for different number properties. Here on the width, we see this icon. For the height, we see this icon. Unfortunately, for X and Y position, we don't get this uh, uh, property. For uh, the rotation, we don't get it. For corner radius, we get it. These are the three properties for we, which we get it. If we put it, it into an auto layout, for uh, left, uh, sorry, horizontal padding, for vertical padding, we get this option. And even for this, we get this option, the space between two objects. Okay, so even for this, we get this uh, option where we can apply variables. So this is how you're going to apply Boolean variable. Uh, you're gonna apply the text one, you're gonna apply the number one, and there's the fourth type of the variable, how you're going to apply that. Just by, let's suppose I want to apply a different color to this, a different color variable to this. I'll go on the style, I'll select. So the square ones are the variable, and the round ones are the style. We need to remember this so that we don't con get confused between what is which. Even it defines like after this, all the styles come in and from starting all the tokens come in and the color variables, whatever you have defined. So I can just simply click on it and this is how it comes up. If I detach it, if I select some uh, style, this is how it will come up. So both have different representation to it and we need to be mindful about it so that we can be aware of what is selected where and how it, everything is happening. So yeah, that was quick recap how you actually go about the variables. Stating a variable is pretty simple. Just click on the canvas anywhere or if you have selected anything, just uh, press escape, go on the left panel, sorry, right panel, click on the open variables and you can just simply start creating variable by clicking on this button. You already have some variables. If not, let's suppose we have a, a new collection. So this window will pop. You can create variable by clicking on this. It will ask you which type of variable you want to go about. And you can simply select colors. You can write session. I'm not going to make it, which is going to confuse me uh, with the other stuff. So that's how you create variable. You create any kind of variable. Moving on. Uh, now, we are getting into advanced prototyping. Now we are figuring out like we have already defined certain variables. Now how we can actually alter those variables using advanced prototyping. Uh, I believe everyone is aware of uh, this panel, like uh, whatever I do, like let's suppose I click, I, if you have uh, gone through our previous uh, workshop, we have already talked about how to go about the basic of uh, prototyping in Figma. So when we talk about advanced prototyping, only two things new added up. One was set variable, another was conditional. Set variable, if we understand by the definition, it is simply saying on some action, sorry, on some trigger, whatever trigger you may choose, like it could be on click, on drag, while hover, pressing, 
small center leaving after delay whatever it could be there will be an action in which you can alter the variable and you can alter the variable with whatever uh, whatever information you want to alter it with there could be condition as well there could be expression as well you can add few variables you can subtract few variable from uh, like each other you can even divide and multiply we'll definitely talk about all of this in uh, future but uh, just give you a gist about it we can define the same trigger we used to define for all the other action which we used to do now we can actually set these uh, variables we can alter these variable which we have already defined somewhere and we are using it multiple uh, places okay so that's how your whole advanced prototyping panel would look like okay moving on now we'll see how to add set variables basically like uh, how to define it uh, how to go about it and so on and so forth like it say to add a set variable action in your prototype go to the prototype tab choose a frame click on the plus icon we already know how to go about it select a trigger trigger could be anything set variable pick the variable that is going to be modified type in the new value or changing uh, changing this value or choose an option for the drop down suggestion please enter that so that is pretty straight forward like if you want to do any kind of interaction you go here you select set variable and it is actually asking you which variable you want to alter let's suppose we say uh, spacing okay and as we see this is a number so now we can do all the operation that number can handle but we haven't applied this variable anywhere in this whole scene we haven't applied if you see no number is actually applied over here neither it is in the uh, auto layout whatever i do nothing's going to change visually at least so for, for that we need to add the uh, variable to your particular design okay if we go by this uh, particular screenshot it says like a uh, set variable we have already done it we have selected uh, one variable and we said we are we are going to make it cherry and uh, we haven't defined it here in next uh, uh, slide we are going to define it and we'll going to change it okay so here it says add set variable action on both the pictures whatever you set like this look cherries and uh, like it says lorem ipsum uh, for now what i'll do uh, i'll maybe make this uh, i'll copy this i'll make this cherries as well i'll quickly define a text variable and let's rename this says live session i'll define a text variable and i'll name it like to fruits okay for now i'll keep it blank oh sorry i'll keep it blank as soon as i keep it blank and i select over here go and apply that fruits to it it says zero somehow it got zero should not be zero oh, okay it's not taking any other value so i'll take lorem ipsum for now as soon as i change this here it got changed over here itself okay now what i'll do i'll go and prototype it says none i'll delete it i'll add another interaction now what i'm going to do is i'm going to alter this uh, text from it i'll add text variable i'll go about choosing the fruit currently it says lorem ipsum if you haven't if you see it says lorem ipsum so this is the value of this variable this is the name and this is the type we'll write uh, expression it could be cherry as i press enter and as we see this in a prototype this lorem ipsum will be changing to cherry so this is actually advanced prototyping now currently it has only one to one map if you can see but as you go deep you can actually create multiple branches you can get as complex as you can you can have multiple action as well so yeah that's about the advanced prototyping again if i go here if i add a, another trigger to it uh, let's suppose i set a variable again i'll say fruits 
and this time uh, though this looks like cherries but uh, what i'll do i'll say red cherries okay again so by the way i'm pressing shift and space to have this preview and as i click on this it goes to cherry as i click on this this go goes to red cherries so Sigma understand like if I'm doing this action that this thing should be altered and everything what am I doing is there is no physical connection to these things. You need to be very, this was not something actually possible before uh, advanced and variables. This is something possible because of the variables. There is no physical connection neither from this nor from this. You can just see that there is a variable icon over here. So it says like whatever you are going to do, whatever trigger is there, the action will take place on the variable side. And by this feature only, we got rid of those uh, scary webs and stuff. So it is pretty cool stuff and it is some next level stuff that we should be focusing on. So yeah, so this is how you actually set the variable and you alter the uh, content. Okay, so this time what we are going to do is now we have done one to one mapping. Like you, you can click on something, something other can change. Now we, we are going to take it one step further. And by the way, I tell you like everything is available on Figma community, Figma blogs. You can anytime go check out the community files or the blogs, you will get immense knowledge. It's just that it's takes a lot of time to go through everything, read through everything, practice yourself. I understand, but trust me, even after this call, uh, this session, you can actually go out and figure out these things on your own. Okay, so now what we are going to do is, we are going to have interactive components and we are going to change it using different, you can say clickable buttons, okay? So if you quickly see what this is about, so this says, if I click on this, this is going to be circle. If I click on this, this is the diamond. See, this is the star. So what is happening? We kind of link one with circle, two with diamond, and three with star. And this being the variant of our interactive component, this is being changed. I hope everyone knows what interactive component is. If, if you guys can quickly uh, mention it on the chat, if anyone don't know about interactive component, we can quickly run through that as well. Did you say yes? Anyone else who, like, I, I want to see some no if, if there are. If not, then that's the best thing. Okay, I got one, I don't know. So interactive components are basically, uh, you create a rectangle, so let's do this. So we have two shapes, I will eventually detach it. Get my data components. So what I have done is instead of this creating a single component, this as a single component, I've added a variant to it, different variant to it. And what I have done, I have I have kind of have interaction between the both. It's not just variant lying here and there. It's the variant having some kind of interactivity. I'll tell you what it is about. Like if I say, I have to go from this to this, so this is a prototyping thing. Uh, you have to change it from on click, this needs to be, okay, I'll go back to this. Okay. So on, uh, let's say we say big and we say small. So if you see, if I use this uh, shape over here, and if I say on click, I need to change it to this one. And on again, if I click on this, I need to change it to this one. And both can have smart animate. It could be of any sort. So what I'm doing is like, I have defined it somewhere else. So both the components are, variants are defined somewhere else and I'm using it somewhere else. And these things, these variants interacting with each other are called interactive components. And this is actually an important concept. We need to uh, be very careful about this. 
Okay, so here we have some interactive components. Uh, you see, we have circle, time, and star. Though they have not interacting with each other, we might have in the next slide. Uh, but this is how this whole variant looks like. And this is basically the variant of shape image. Now, what we have done, we have already defined that the binding variant shape changes to circle. It's a text. Binding variable shape changes to diamond, like we did in the previous one. Binding variable uh, variant shape, it changes to star. But the thing is, like this is text, but this is image. How this is happening? So this is happening purely by, if you see, if we go back to design, if I bring this, if I bring this variant out, I can see that under this, I get to attach a var variable to it. Like if I delete it, here you cannot actually see any kind of those part. If you even click on it, you cannot define any kind of a variable attached to this variant. But here, as you create the instance, you get to you get an option where you can assign a variable to it. And this variable can be anything. So what we have done till now, like what I'll do, I'll quickly create another variable under this and uh, I'll say shape image. Okay. And for now we'll keep it circle. I'll attach shape image to it. So now I'll go here. Instead of this, I need shape image. I, I'm fine with circle. Okay. I have to write circle. I'm fine with circle. As soon as I click on this, this will remain this. But as soon as I attach, Okay, so this name is circle. This name, its name is diamond. As soon as I say, this needs to change to diamond. And as soon as I see it, as soon as I click it, that changes to diamond. So what we can infer from here is, like we can link components, sorry, variant. It could be interactive components or it could be variant. We can attach them with the uh, text type of variable. We can even attach it with the number type of variable, but only these two options you get to attach it. You can even attach with the boolean, but in that case, only there should be only two options, uh, two variants. If there is any third variant, then Sigma would allow it. Sigma won't even understand it like what you're talking about. So, as a whole, what we have seen till now, like if I click on something, some text can change. If I click on something, I can link this variant with text, which is that is changing, and eventually this image, this uh, variant is changing. So you can see how we are actually mapping things here. And trust me, this is just the starting. It's really gonna go more complex than this. Like, I understand this might look a bit tricky, but as you uh, get your hands uh, onto it, like it, it's gonna be super easy and it will be so clear in your head, like you can attach this to this and you can change it by clicking this or maybe doing some kind of interaction, something of that stuff. And yeah, it will be much easier uh, if you going to try it on yourself. Again, now in this example, what we are trying to do is now we will be changing the, we will be uh, applying some variables to these buttons and th with the same, we are going to change it. So basically this is the example how you're going to apply the previous, all the stuff. So if we see this, I think, I hope it is aligned, yeah. So if you click on this, it it is actually, if you see the name of this uh, particular plant, it says Monstera, right? I'll keep it on the side. It says Monstera. And even if you see on this, it says like change the plant to plant and the plant text is already applied to Monstera. Okay. If this says the plant change it to fig, fig is basically this. That's why it is changing to fig. So basically its name and even if you can see this type of the plant 
So whatever is mentioned over here is getting changed by the button over here. And because we have changing the variable attached to this particular thing. Again, if we click on this, as we clicked on this, it says double Z, right? So its name is double Z. That's why when we click on this button, there's nothing to do with this, uh, whatever you have written over here. Whatever you are mentioning over here, that's the doing the magic. Here you can, again, you, you, you can uh, align a text with it and say like whatever you want it. Like uh, even if you want the same name, you can have it. But that's not the whole point. The whole point is like how you are actually making this whole thing functional. And here the magic happens. Okay. I think this was pretty much clear as it was the extension of the uh, previous example that we discussed. Moving on, like uh, how we can actually create all of those sort here we, I think we will be having some interactive component if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'll create a component over here. So I, what I'll do, I'll quickly delete everything. I'll create it for you guys once again. So what I'm trying to do is like this is, let's suppose we have this, I'll even remove the star from here. So this is, uh, I'll detach it. So this is one component, right? I'll add another variant to it. Instead of having uh, this as a red color, uh, sorry, yellow color, I'll mail this. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, actually I'm uh, copying and pasting the properties by control alt C and in Mac it would be uh, command alt C and command alt V. So I've created two variants, okay? And it says selector. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an interaction. Uh, let's move out of it. Like if I click on this, it should be, oh, sorry, my bad. If I click on diamond, the button should be of yellow color and it can change in any way it uh, wants. I I'll have it instant for now. If I click on circuit, it goes back to this option. Okay. Let's test this quickly. Okay, I'll test it in another frame over here. Okay. If I click click on this, it changes to yellow. If I click on this, this changes to yellow. Okay. I'll create another variant. Okay. Another component set. I'll get this from here. I'll try to match the size. I'll select both, I'll again go back, create a component set. So these are the two variants. I can even give this a name called circle. So by the way, if you can see the properties and the values of this variant are conflicting. Change the applied values on this variant to resolve this. So what it is saying to me is that the, both the uh, name of the both the variants are same. So property one should have different value for both the variants. I'm changing it to circle and another one would be, as soon as I change it to circle, it's gone. You can even change it from here, by the way. And uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'll select this. I'll make it diamond. Oh, by miss. Got it. So I've got two variants over here. So what I'm trying to do is like, uh, if you see, I have this variant, I have this variant. This is a part of another uh, component set. And I have these two variants. What we're trying to do is, like if I click on diamond, diamond should come up. Okay, if I click on diamond, diamond should come up. If I click on circle, circle should come up, okay? And this can be simply done by just using a text variable. I'll define again, uh, we have the shape image. We can use that itself. Like for this, uh, we can go here, we can attach it. We can have a shape image. Yeah, it's there. Okay, why is it not? Okay. Okay, so this is something. 
the fourth story we have to make sure that the the naming convention uh, the naming convention is on point like you are not writing circle to some you are misspelling it and you are figuring out that this is not working and rhyming diamond to something else and figuring out yeah this is not working so yeah now this came up right uh, previously it was not coming up it was the name convention was not right okay if i see if i again check it this is working fine this is not changing what i am going to do is uh, i'll even assign this with the the shape image okay so now when now the tricky part i would say not tricky as such but if you try to see from here like this is going to give value to t shape that change this when you click on this and this will change to this when the this value will be actually changing so how to go about it uh If I click on this, it says shape image and circle. Oh, sorry. If I click on this, it already has a variant property. I'll another add. Okay, I'm not sure this gonna work, but let's try. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, this is not working actually. And I know what the problem is. This won't work over here. Okay. Hold over. On click set the variable to. Again, I think I'm missing on something. Just give me a moment. Click on the selector, interactive component is set, and that's okay. Fine with me. Okay. Uh, do I need to set the over here? Just give me a moment. Let me check it quickly. Save image. Let's say go to diamond. Done. And click on this. Let's go to okay. perfect. So I'll talk about this like whatever I have done here. So this is what is happening is like uh, I I already defined that uh, if you click on diamond, this is gonna come up. I define click on circle, then this is gonna come up. I have mapped this diamond. I have added actually multiple uh, action to a single trigger, and this was not possible before. This is only possible once advanced prototyping came in. And what I did is like I told it, uh, told Figma that when I click on this particular button, change the property to diamond. This is the diamond one. And this is one action. Take another action where you are going to change the variable shape image to diamond. Earlier, the shape image was, the text was circle. If we see from here, go back here, the shape image is circle. So it is altering the shape image text and that is coming up diamond. Now I have already mentioned uh, this instance gonna take change as the this text changes. So what you are seeing over here is like this is the variable that its name is shape image but the as per the value this image is changing and that value is getting changed from this interaction. And that's where actually interactive components are coming in. Uh, if you guys want me to repeat, I can repeat it. I know this is something a bit complex than whatever we have discussed previously. 
I don't see anyone in the chat. Probably in a toggle button, you say this can be boolean. Yeah. Anyone? I'll wait for another five seconds if we please repeat. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. I'll quickly go back uh, before repeating this. So what we have learned till now is like there are certain values that we are defining. If you see here, we are defining certain values under some names and those names can be under any type of a variable and variables are basically four types as you can see. Okay. We learned if you click on a button, you can change some text. If you click on that button, you can even change the color. If you click on some button, even you can change the number. Even if you click on button, you can toggle between the boolean. So that's how the basic premise works, right? If you click on anything, something will happen. Something will change or something will alter. It's just that how we are defining things. That is the tricky part. Here, what we have done here, like, uh, we have a button consider this one as a button when i'm clicking on this one some text is getting changed so basically this text shape is getting changed to circle if i'm clicking on two second button the shape is getting changed to diamond if i'm clicking on third button the shape is getting changed to star i think till here everything is clear right if you click on something something is getting changed now what I have done is like I have given this T shape assigned to all of these three components or variants basically. These three variants have circle in their name, have diamond in their name and star in their name. So as I click on this, if I use this circle over here, it says change it to circle and this Shape name is also circle. So that's why this is going to remain the same. As soon as I click here, this shape will change to the diamond one. So what are we doing is we are mapping whatever text we are mentioning over here with the name of the component. Same is happening over here as well. I'll go back to the current uh, example. So what we have done, we have written circle over here as a button. We have diamond as a button. And we have defined, let's suppose if we click on diamond button, the diamond button should get yellow. And along with that, that particular text should change to diamond. So this is one part of it, right? As soon as this text shape image text changes to diamond, I know that I have defined diamond over here. And that is the value of shape image. I have defined diamond over here and I have assigned this instance with shape image and uh, as i click on it what figma does is figma change this whole whole variant to the next one as you can see over here now this came up over here and this also got changed as per the name assigned to it shape name we got it we it says diamond right so diamond come up circle come up as soon as you click on circle. I have detached it. I'm doing it manually, but instead of you doing manually, Figma is doing it for you because you have defined that shape image. Again, what I'll do, I'll refresh it. Oh God. I'll refresh it. We have circle. As soon as we click diamond, this diamond comes up. If you see here, What is happening? The value of the variable is changing as per the interaction we are making. And because of which this whole thing is changing. If we detach it, we can do it manually. As simple as that. So whatever we can do manually, couple of things can be automated. That's the whole thing that we are discussing over here. I hope it is clear now. Yeah, yep. In free, I think we can, we can't have, okay, I'm not sure what free is, but uh, you can have multiple action, uh, multiple action uh, based on your just single uh, interaction or trigger. That's how whole advanced Sigma works. I think uh, we have a lot to cover. Like next thing was about this only, like how this multiple action takes place. 
uh, if we click on this, what's happening? Uh, as we clicked on this button, this button got changed to tick and a overlay coming from the top. This is how the multiple action is taking place. On just one trigger, you can set up multiple action and that can be only possible if you see here, that can be only possible with this small button, add action. You can collapse this, you can add as many uh, option as you can. We even have conditional, uh, like, like there are tons of things that you can explore. One thing we need to remember over here is like Figma will go through all the actions sequ sequentially. It won't be doing, key. first it will, take up this one, then it will take up this one, then maybe this one, then this one. It will take this one up, then this, then this, then this. And you can even delete it from the left side. Uh, if you want to just look into this one, like how this is whole uh, interaction is set up, it says open the overlay first, then change uh, this button to this one. And as you can clearly see, we, ha we have a toggle button over here, right? Which is not generally come up. It only comes up if you add true or false to the value. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. If we have this, let's suppose we have created a uh, component. I'll detach it from here. And uh, as soon as I create another variant of it, and let's suppose we, we are doing this, and let's name it to cross. And let's uh, name it as, okay. Now, whenever I use it, so it's gonna show up like add and cross. But what if I want to have a toggle button over there? What I'll do, I'll quickly go back, I'll write true, I'll write false. And a toggle button will pop up. So this is basically telling me, okay. So I'm not sure why is it not changing? Yeah, okay. This should change technically. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have actually rotated the, I should be rotating this. Yeah, got it. As soon as you on it, it's the add one, like that's the true one. And as soon as you close it, I think that's the false one. So yeah, we can get this and same, by the way, same is actually popping up over here as well. Like if you see this, if you have actually defined it in a fashion of like plus minus cross or something of that sort, cross or click, then that value will be coming up. So Figma consider your false and true as uh, a toggle button. So that's a cool thing I recently got to know. I'm not sure how many of you guys know about it, but yeah, that that's about it. So, yeah, I think it's already 10, 20 and we have a long way to go. I, I think it would be better if we wrap it uh, over here itself. Uh, what do you say Manish on this? Like, I'm not sure it would be very easy for everyone to consume so much in the one go. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So what we can do is we can split it up into two sessions um, sure. and we can complete the rest. Uh, the second uh, the second half in another session probably next week or something yeah works fine but like frankly speaking for me it's super crazy to have this kind of understanding of figma um, if you get it like trust me you will be fascinated and you will fall in love with this product itself like figma as a product though i know like it already has another feature which everyone loves but this is something super crazy and super out of the world so yeah, let's go about the question. Yeah, we, we can probably uh, ask, uh, uh, let me open up. Stop. Okay, uh, I've allowed users to unmute themselves. So if you all have any questions, feel free to ask Anshul and um, we can answer them right now. So one question that I guess um, someone has asked about is they are not able to assign a variable in a component set. Okay. So maybe you can answer that Anshul. I'm not sure what, what, how they are trying to uh, variable to component set, right? Like if you see, this is a component set and you cannot actually assign variable into it. You can assign only once you create the instance and that's where you actually it will come up. Uh, 
you can assign with the uh, I think the numbers property, but you cannot assign what we have actually talked about. So just simply by clicking here, you can assign the variables on here. Even here, you can assign variable. Like the color is done, the number is done. Let's figure out if we can do text. Yeah, we can do text as well here. And uh, if you talk about boolean one, yeah, if for the two, we can apply boolean as well, right? Uh, okay. We can apply boolean over here or not? I don't think so. Okay, we cannot apply boolean in this case. I'm not sure why, or maybe I have missed out on something, but we cannot apply Boolean. Boolean is generally for the layer panel. If you see here, if you see, click on it, here you can apply. Let's see if we can click on it and apply. Yeah, we can apply. So we can even apply Boolean as well here. This, this was the thing I was missing on. Okay, so I think I hope that answers the question, right? Yeah, I don't think there are any more questions, but I have also shared Anshul's LinkedIn on the chat. So feel free to connect with him and you can ask him questions as well. We will also upload the recording of the session on our YouTube channel, which we always do. And you can also watch the recording there. So yeah, that's about it, people. And um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And thank you so much, Anshul, for doing such an amazing session uh, on an advanced topic already in Figma. Thanks, Manish. Thanks for having me. Really looking forward to another session as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a... Great night, great morning, great day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.